everybody, this is Dracula. I'm going to be showing you how to make a Krunker map. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is go to Krunker.io. That takes us to the Krunker page on the web browser. I'm going to click over here at the top right where it says create games on the Krunker editor. It brings up the editor. I'm going to click quick start. Now, some of you might not like this, but in order to publish, you got to be level 20. I had to get to level 20 before I could publish my map. They start you already with a spawn point and a floor. Uh, with your keyboard, uh, W, A, S, and D, you can move around forward, backward, left, and right. E goes up, Q goes down. So you right click and hold, and you can look around, sort of free look in any direction. And I can move around and do this number, and move back and forward any which way I want to go. Now that we know how to move, let's look at manipulating the object. There is already a floor. And I'm assuming you don't want to play on a floor this small, so we want to make it bigger. So what we're first going to do is click on it. I'm left clicking, by the way. You know it's selected because this uh, three axis shape here is there for you to look at. I can move it along this axis. I can click here to move it along that axis to move it up and down, the green one. That's one way to move it. The other way to move it is to come over here to the transform. And you can do it by typing in 0, minus 10 and zero. Now the reason it's minus 10 on the y-axis is because it's below the ground. This is the spawn point. They put it right on the ground. That always can cause glitches so I like to put it slightly above the ground. You have less chance of being stuck in the floor when you spawn in. I showed you how to move the object. Now I'm going to show you how to change the shape of the object. Up here, oh, by default, it was on this selection here. There's another one that looks like it, but different. You notice the thing changed. Instead of having arrows, it's got blocks. What, the floor, I'm back on the floor now. I'll watch. This way, oh, it's getting bigger. And this way, oh look, it's getting bigger that way. Oh look, it's getting taller. I don't want it taller, I want it back where it was. You can uh, make the changes over here on the transform, on the one that says size. I can sure it up and make it 250 by 250. Because I was just eyeballing it before. And now, now it is a perfect square. Now I want to try it out. I want to get in there and run around on my square and see what it's like. So I'm going to click up here with this little play button is. Click. Now, your friends can't come in here and play with you, but you can get in there and try it out by clicking play. And here I am. I am on the square that I made. There's no sky. There's no walls. And I can just run right off the edge and no! So what's the problem? We got to have a barrier that keeps people from jumping off the edge. <clears throat> I want to make a barrier around the edge to keep people from falling off. So this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to come up here to object and I'm going to start with a basic object. I'm going to make a cube. Oop, there's my cube. I'm going to switch back here because I want to move it. I don't want to put, I'm going to make it into a wall, but I want it to be out here at the edge. All right. And I don't want it to be a cube, I want it to be a wall. So I'm gonna to have to change the shape of it. So I click back to shape and I can drag it and make it longer. Long wall. I can try to make sure it's just right, but I know that this needs to be 250 because I made the other one 250. Yeah, you want to be careful. You want to make sure when you click over here that the cursor starts flashing in there. Because when you hit backspace, you could delete your entire object. Now, I want to make it tall. So tall that nobody could ever jump to the top of it. 100. Alright. Enter. 
So this is a wall, but if I don't want it to seem like we're playing inside a box, I can do this. I can make it invisible by clicking here uh, and just there. I'm gonna do this real quick. I'm gonna switch back to movement. I'm gonna hold down the shift button. I'm gonna, I'm gonna press R to duplicate the object. And now I'm gonna move the one that I just duplicated. I can, I'm gonna move it to the other end well, let's go. I'm just grabbing it and moving it and I'm putting it right there. I'm gonna duplicate it again I'm gonna hold down shift and hit R and I just duplicated it and I, but I don't want the wall to be the same direction as the others and you could do that by hitting F and it does it automatically for you it reverses the uh, dimensions of, of, the, of the long and skinny sides and makes it basically a wall that's facing the other way. And now I just put it here on the edge. I'm gonna hold Shift and R and make it a fourth one. And now we'll bring it to the other side. And now we're playing in a box. It, it doesn't, when I go in to test it, it doesn't look like anything's changed. Play. It looks like the same exact thing that I was doing, only when I come over here, I can't get past the edge because the barrier is collidable, but it is invisible. If you want it to be visible, all you gotta do is go back in here. Let me close that. Go back in here and turn those on and you got a visible wall again. Now, if I want it to look like I'm playing someplace outside, click on environment sky I'm gonna change the sky to a gradient oh, look at that that looks much better I think I can add the cloud texture click here and I can make the color of the sky different I just I added the sky for some ambience but now it looks like we're floating over like we're up in the clouds or something which is kind of weird so I'm going to add one more component. I'll add an ocean. How about that? I'll enable the ocean. Yeah, there. That looks good. Um, change the water color. I want the water to be more blue. There we go. Got blue water. All right, now let's go in and look at it. All right, so. Here I am, I come up to the edge of the water, can't go any further, so I'm in a box, it doesn't look like I'm in a box, I'm on the ground, now you're going to want things to hide behind, right? We can add more obstacles just by going to object, going basic, add a cube, just like we learned before, move it where we want it, change the shape, uh, bring it up, and we've got a wall you can hide behind. So we've got an obstacle here, and I can come and go back here. If I bring it down a little bit more, I can shoot over it, and there's a little bit of a gap here, so let's fix that. Now I can shoot over the top of it. But the problem is I keep spawning out here in the middle and then having to run over here and get behind my wall, right? We don't want that. So what we're gonna do is take the spawn point and move it over here. So we're behind the wall. We don't want it facing this way because the enemy is gonna be that way. So we're going to change the direction up here so it's facing that way we need two spawn points because we're gonna have two teams to make another spawn point I can go object zones spawn point and I just placed another spawn point over here and I'm gonna just bring it over here and put it right there I'm gonna change the direction one two three times so it's facing the enemy and 
over here, I'm going to duplicate these. Control R and then move it over here. Take this one, Control R, move it over here. But I don't want them to be the same on both sides, so I'm gonna move this one here. I'm gonna move this one there. But to make sure that team, the first team spawns in over here, you can change the team instead of default. You change it team one over here and team two over here. All right, so you got two spawn points. You got two uh, obstacles, uh, things to hide behind. And that's basically how you do it. Oh, well, let's move this one to where it's not out in the open where it spawns behind the barrier so you don't get shot on spawn in immediately like somebody spawned in on the other side so you can put these wherever you want you can make small ones where they can climb up on them um, just put them all over the map wherever you want so you you and your friends can hide behind them uh, now I'm gonna show you how to save it come up here and you go file save project all right and down here if you know windows you can go show in folder and the folder where it goes is um, downloads by default slide this over here you can see it and it has made a text file there is the code you don't got to go searching for any code um, you can save it you can keep it as test file you can change the name of it up here before you save if you if you want to change the name of it my map I didn't put any spaces it doesn't like spaces because it's going to put that name into the code and if you look at the code you'll see up here it says my map it's right there in the code if you like looking at code let me get to the point where you can just write this on your own without using the editor if I close this leave oh no I just lost my whole thing no I can because I saved it look up there and it's gonna open the editor now I'll go quick start and there's everything I did is gone but I'm gonna come up here, go import project. And what it wants you to do is copy and paste the text there. So I'm going to open. It just opened it in a simple text. Select, I right click and choose select all. And I'm gonna go uh, control C to copy. And then I'm gonna come up here and click in there and paste it and click okay and boom there's everything I just pasted the code when you go to publish you're gonna want to export the project if you try to upload a save project it won't work or I can come up here and choose publish game but before I do that I'm gonna have to have a thumbnail so you can get a good thumbnail by going in here I usually use a snipping tool. With snipping tool open, I press control on the print screen, and now, look at that, I can select, and I have a, a picture. I'm gonna go save as, we'll call it 01, so it'll be up there at the top. I need to make it smaller. So we just gotta make it 40 kilobytes, so this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna open Microsoft Paint. I'm gonna open, find the picture and now uh, all I gotta do is uh, resize it uh, let's see 180 pixels save as smaller and now it is 25.4 kilobytes so that will be small enough so now I can go publish I'm gonna go publish game thumbnail smaller there we go and so now I'm going to hit publish and update. Map name taken. So I'm going to change this to 
their access test map. Export. Then I'm gonna publish game. Oh, I need to upload that thumbnail again. And that should be everything I need to do. Drax test map. Publish. Uh, there we go. It is uploaded. It is uploaded. So now when I go into Crunker to play, I click over here where it says games. Then I'm gonna go my games. And there it is, Drax test map. I'm gonna click to play it. And now I'm in the game. And other players can join. Is that you, Zane? Pro Kid 4, is that you? <laughs> so there's there's Zane. Next time I'll show you how to add more players, how to add more game modes. <laughs> Not much to hide behind here. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you next time. Oh, he's gonna shoot, he's gonna shoot me now. <laughs> Kingsford.